Sure. And so what we're seeing in this game is instead of picking heroes that synergize together, like being a problem, I'd say they're not countering the Void Spirit. They pick Mars, who, yes, great hero. Tusk, I honestly think, is a great hero. But none of these heroes stun Void Spirit. And this oh, is a Quinn Void Spirit, man. I, I feel like, uh, I, still, I still really, I'm feeling the puck. I mean, Undying and Snapfire do nothing to, di none of these heroes do anything to disable Would you puck. pick your mid or your carry right now? I would pick my mid. I would pick mid. Is this guaranteed to be, uh... And I guess it's a mid Mars. Mid Void Spirit? Or mid Vino. You said it's Quinn Void Spirit. Is that guaranteed uh, or can it be offline I, It's not guaranteed. I would imagine Layla's, it doesn't seem like his kind of hero, but... He would probably be capable of playing it. He probably yeah. plays whatever. Yeah. MSS plays it too on four positions. So, but I unless it's a mid snap, I, mean, I guess three snap. Uh, does does Quinn play mid snap? I don't think he does. No, I, I, I mean really I, I think mid snap's more of a meme than anything. It's hard to pull off. It's very situational. Yeah. Um. So. They uh, still don't have a great answer to Void Spirit, right? I I was gonna say Void Spirit, who's first rounded. The thing is, right? It's obviously just one hero, but now they can pick another hero who also should have a pretty good game. Like this is a sick like Jug or just in general BKB hero game. Like I'd say, is Void in the pool still? Yeah, I don't love Void. I guess. I mean, it feels like a Jug Morphling game. It feels really strong to pick Jug or Morphling here. Another hero that's I agree. like something that abuses the. Total mm. lack of disable. Yeah. Instant so two disable. heroes that can get out of Mars ult. Don't really mind the Vino. Either of them. Uh, those are the two heroes that stand out to me. You could also. Oh, Morph's uh, already banned. Never mind. They saw that one coming. I didn't notice. TB. That. I know TB was the big, uh, the big Vino counter. It would have a tough time in lane, but it would be a good hero for the game. And you can uh, dodge the the Mars spear. It's very hard to spear any like illusion hero. It's really yes. annoying. Just Matt does, then you hit, most likely hit a Speaking map. Speaking of which, if there was a game I would ever sec recommend PL, now would be the time. Because their only role left to pick is carry, and most of the time Carrie's PL counter is PL. countered by mid laners. Yeah. It's kind of interesting how that works. Something I've had to discuss with my viewers a lot is how certain heroes in certain roles are usually countered by a specific role. It's like TB and PL aren't really heroes usually countered by the carry. Yeah, Whoa, there it is. I liked it. I liked it. When many you suggested it, I was like, you know what? The Q is really annoying. I hadn't tuned like out it. of his point by then, so <laughs> it must be legit. Back in the day when I was a Veno spammer. This shit was annoying. A month you get Poison a Sting a on Illusions. Ago. You get you get Poison this, Sting this, on this, Illusions. This, That's this why it's annoying. annoying. That's yeah. why it's annoying. Yeah. Reflection, you basically kill yourself if you level your your E or your W. I usually go like like uh, max wards against Terrible I don't know what you do, but I usually go like zero it two three like or support, one one three. If the support is weaker and and your support is fairly strong, uh, you can like, kill the TB by going like two two and then max wards. Oh, so you actually just go you go all in for the you kill lane kill potential. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, and, yeah, and, that's and that does possible. work. TB, that, has, that. TB has like four hundred HP or some stupid shit. But with an undying, I mean that's a hard that's a, that is a hard hero to get through to get to the TB. Tusk, Veno does threaten undying though. Five yeah, but I, then I think. Undying is doing his job of being like a so Yeah, he's just drawing a lot of attention. Yeah. I mean, that's what he does anyways. Right? Undying's but entire Dota existence is to die. That's his goal. It's just so brutal. Isn't, it, isn't that just weird? It's unfortunate. Even with his old school Dota 1 Imagine if Oracle's job was to not understand what was happening in the future. The that lore would just be crazy. Th that would just be absurd. That wouldn't make any sense. It would be irony at its best. His name is Oracle, but he's... Can't see anything yes. in the future. Yeah, what if he was just blind? That'd be perfect. He'd just be blind. They uh, they should uh, uh, make an Oracle skin where he doesn't have a head. Yes. So he literally can't that see. That is a yeah. great idea. Yeah. Ten Honestly, Jenkins, that's one of your top ten ideas of the event. Really? I mean, I've had a lot of great... That's true. You have had a lot of great... I'm going to get rid of LC and... Something or another. No yeah. Troll Warlord. No. Now how much you guys love that hero? I would love just some Troll damage Oracle. mitigator. Classic. Like just something something that helps them and survive the sustain battle here because they've got a terrorblade now. You got this man up oh, you, stand for still for Quincy. Like an underlord type. I'm not saying that's the specific one. Tide Hunter, Underlord. Tide, tide would be decent, yeah. Something that just says Terrorblade's gonna stand his ground and he's pipe gonna builder, hit you. for sure. Yeah. You, you need a pipe right now. Oh hell oh, Underlord it is. Very nicely Me done. Me and Jenkins are actually coaching Quincy Crew. Quincy Crew? That's how we came to the conclusion those two All right, let me coach Thunder Predator. Okay. What do we need here? A mid? 
Versus Voids. I mean, is Puck still there? Is this not the I best Slark game we'll ever see this patch? Wait, who is there? Good mid? Slark game. Oh, wait, wait. What position is Venno here? It's most likely like a mid Mars. It could so be mid, mid Venno. It could be could mid, mid Venno. Venno technically. Okay, I've so seen, it's a I've carry. seen people. I've seen Mason that. play carry Venno. NASA. I don't even know what's good against Terrorblade as a carry. It feels like nothing. You you don't really you just pick shit that's not bad against Terrorblade. So you don't want single target physical damage here, here heroes. But like I would say this is the best Slark game I'll see this patch. Like you couldn't ask for a better Slark game. You've got Oracle as the defense. You've got a lot of team fight which he lacks usually. You've got people that show in lanes and Slark likes to play off map I, and it threatens to kill on all heroes on the. I I, I like the Slark. I mean I, I just feel like the Slark. It's very hard for a Slark to die in this game. You like, can die to a lot of AoE stuff early, but once you get, like, two items, sure, you, you sure. don't die anymore. Right, right. And the lane against Underlord is obviously decent with an Oracle. When you've, got a ro when you've got a rotating Tusk, it is very nice. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. You want a kill hero here. You want, like, a PA or Slark or something like that that benefits the Tusk coming in and, and killing him. And Gyrocopter. Okay. Well, actually, funny enough, that's Choice. that's arguably like one of the only carries that you could that does win the Terrorblade matchup because of the, all the magic damage. But it's just it's like not a, it it's though? not it's not a hero. Is the thing people don't really consider. I will Gyro say a hero he's that nice. The one they didn't have a solution to Undying at that point before that. All right, that who are you guys going for? Still going Quincy Crew. Quincy Crew. Quincy Crew. Yeah. BSJ. Yep. Same thing. All right, it is a clean sweep according to our analysts here. Let's see what Quincy Crew has to offer for game two after this short break. Welcome back, everyone. Beyond the Needles, we have the Monster Energy Dota Summit 13 online, and we've got the second game for you here of Quincy Crew versus Thunder Predator. Quincy Crew still looking very, very strong. They're looking like the kings of America. Thunder Predator doing the best that they can to try to shake things up. Did give them a little bit of their run for their money until Yuar went and got himself that divine rapier and murdered the entire team. Lizard. What are your thoughts on this? I know you're coming from EU Dota, a little bit of a, a weaker region in Dota, some might say. Excuse me, what? <laughs> you know, you what? don't play in the streets like we do here in NAS. You guys got that fancy Dota, the type that, you know, it's all scripted out for you real nice like. You don't play in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, dude. I'm 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 done. This is like what? You 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 can't roll bar with the by... NA guys? Come on now. Yuri Avar buying rapier when he has an ages. Dude, like in my pubs, they, they buy rapier all the time. Like even when we're winning, losing, doesn't matter. It's, it's CIS boys, they've been doing it forever. But so uh, do they win all their games though? Like the NA Yawar just did? The chat over here? Have you have you heard the story of uh Hwas the Vise with four rapiers? <laughs> I have Gyrocopter. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, so. I don't know if the Zoomers and chats have heard that story, but that is a great story if you get the chance to hear it. In fact, we have a pause here, Papa, here, if you want to tell everybody. Tell us the story. Well, there's, there's this one player from the CIS who likes to buy rapiers. When he needs them, when he doesn't, well, he isn't truly a player anymore. He's an analyst. It's boring now. already with your little EU thing. We're going to move on. We're going to get into this NASA match here. Are you little kids, listen to me as I speak. <laughs> we got Boomer Lizard over here. Yeah. Tell us about the glory days of uh, of Havost. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's how I felt right there. There's, I mean, watching those games and those tournaments from back then just fires me up still it, it's crazy. Just that that fire, that will will to play competitively and compete and win tournaments. Like the moment you watch those early TIs, it's all there. At least for a day or two. Yeah, yeah, you do sure. though. Like uh, I was going back and I was watching old TI videos and like I was watching the Dendi Fountain Hook, and it it gets you so excited about the game. Yeah, exactly. That, that's literally what I was talking about. The same video I watched like a few months back. By the way, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the game because there's already a lot happening. We have a Venomancer switch up. Uh, mm -hmm. They literally want to dodge the Terrorblade lane with the Venomancer. You don't want to lane against him. Plus the lane versus Underlord is much better for Venomancer. Um, I'm not sure 
if uh, panel talked about this, but this last pick, Lelis Thunderlord, is very good for Quincy Crew because it denies Thunder Predator the ability to go for PL or Naga as well. So a really good pickup for them, but we'll see how this lane versus Veno goes. I do like the way they swapped it up. I know um, I've seen Sammy Boy do this in the past when he's playing Terrorblade. I think BSJ mentioned it too, but you get a point in that... Uh reflection right and you yeah, reflect yeah. poison sting right back onto venomancer making things a lot more difficult yeah, but what do you feel about the the mars mid though that's something i'm actually really interested but they're sending leo style against quinn on this particular hero yeah they picked it very early on i i think you can do quite a bit uh with the mars mid, especially if you I, I, you don't have to go for the that right click damage there's some players that even go for dezo on mid mars but I think in a game such as this one, even Yules is just good. Like, bottle blink Yules, something like that, and you're ready to rock. Yeah, interesting to know too. We saw the position 5 Mars in the last game, and uh, the only thing he really went for was like, he had the tranquil boots, he had the blink dagger. <laughs> it was uh, it was like watching just a really poor regular core <laughs> Mars, honestly. We didn't see anything particularly uh, different in terms of varying things up, but you have Matthew and MJZ here in the top lane and it feels like they want to try to maybe make a kill, but it'll be difficult for them here. With tag team and with gyrocopter, I think they can level get the kill. one though, they have shards. They don't have tag team. Oh. Go try to purge it off. SVG take a decent amount of damage, but again, he's an undying, he's tanky. I feel like you need a couple more levels before you can, or at least, like you said, tag team, not the Sharks. You need sorry. tag team, yeah, you need tag team for sure, but the problem was uh, lane was never under control. It was always pushing in, so tag team wouldn't really help. You can't go under the tower anyway. Bottom lane, Nemesis. Yeah, they've been putting a decent amount of harass on. He does get trapped up in these creeps. They need maybe one more ahead, has the fairy fire, gets the deny off, though. So down goes MSS, but at the hands of UR. I'm sure there's they something did. anime that we could say about this. I know how much you love your anime, Lizard. Yeah, you, you really know me. You understand me. <laughs> very well, I can see. Um, it, so they get to deny, but what's good for Thunder Predator, at least, is the fact that they forced that meta. He was going to use it anyway, so it's not really a big win, mm -hmm. but it's something. I mean, the ideal move is to be able to go and get the kill on Yoar after he pops meta, right? Because it's so much time that he just doesn't have it any longer and he can't take advantage, but... Yeah, he was I... definitely not in any danger at that point, yeah. so... Might you're, as well just waiting. It then. you're just waiting the level 3 on Veno, which they do have now. We'll see what he goes for. He can go 2 points of Gale, 2 points of Poison. Yeah, he goes Stink, and now it's kill time. Or is it? Oh, they have the Snowball, though! Yoar's not going to be able to teleport out! Can they get enough damage though? Matthew having to be careful here. He's trying to go in, get a couple more hits off. They have the fairy fire. Can he outlast you? Are here? Yes, he's gonna be able to get the kill, but MSS will be able to get the revenge. You're making me into Matthew fanboy as well. Like that was big brain, <laughs> right? That, big that, that, brain that, Matthew real, play. That, that was really big brain. Like you, you can see lots of players saving the first skill point, but he was saving the second one because he understood if I take tag team, there's a chance he TPs away. So let's just wait and see what happens. And he waited un until he saw that TP skills into the snowball and then they kill him. It, it was really well played by him. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. I like seeing him on these particular heroes just a little bit better too. Uh, you know, the Nyx Assassin he did a lot with, but I feel like on heroes like Tusk or, you know, in the past we've seen him on the Ember and Void Spirit, he just gets so much more done with the ability to be able to, you know, kind of dodge in and out a little bit easier than say a Nyx Assassin who finds himself in the thick of things. Yeah. Uh, he's rotating mid now to secure the rune oh. as well, it, which he Almost won't. Yeah. I mean, that's classic Thunder Predator there. Uh, Sacred though in the bottom lane taking a lot of damage, but it's like he's going to be able to stick around the lane a little bit longer. Keeps applying that poison sting, trying to just mess with MSS because he does have tangos being sent out to him here on the courier. Shards come in, knock MSS back. They'll go drop down another ward, but they'll turn it right back around. I a little bit too far here. You are so gonna be able to go and get the denial again. No, this time Matthew will be able to clean up. But that was so costly. He goes for the rune, and because of that, the Veno literally dies. Of course, Venomancer misplayed that a little bit. He had uh, time to go back and stick on the his tower, but 
he he soaked in way too much damage while Tusk was gone. Sometimes you have to decide whether to help your safe laner or to go secure that rune. Leo, can he make this work? He's trying to dodge now. He's not going to be able to. Quinn just had his number the entire time here in the mid lane. Even forced to use that fairy fire. Yeah, and he gets a bounty. He steals one from them too. This is really good from Quinn right now. Getting that kill. He's also winning the CS war too. Not by a lot, but it's going well. Oh. But now he's got says. his dancing shoes on here. He's got the salve going too. It's like he's gonna be able to walk away. Has the TP. They don't have the cookie. And see you later, nerds. Uh, I, I'm all down for giving credit when credit is due. But uh, MSS was shooting the dragons. He wasn't really aiming at the, at the tusk there, right? Like, in, uh, the, it, yeah. yeah, the scatter blast was way off point. They are securing Turblade's farm, more or less. He has 20 CS. He's on a hard lane, but um, you expect him to do a little bit more versus a Venom. Everyone's in this mid lane. You see top, they're going to try to see if it's... No, it's going to be bottom. Matthew will pick it up. There's no... Oh, they get the kill on Leo Styles Courier, though. And that's his raindrops. That feels a little bad. Can they make something here over onto UR, though, with that invis rune, Matthew? Are you joining on Sacred? They just keep applying that Poison Sting. Like, uh, you are just gonna play it safe though, hiding the tree line. Knows that he doesn't have a support with him, and that Matthew did snap up that rune. I believe they had vision on that. The Radiant Scan, eager to know Dyer's whereabouts. MSS is rotating back down bottom, so is SVG. So, this aggression down. might be punished. Sacred is... Like, he's strong when he has cover. But if they go behind, they can kill him. But because they had that rotation, they did manage to go and get a kill on Lelis, knowing that he no longer had the support going there. Well, that's opening up the top here for uh, MNZ a little bit more. Mm. But still have that rotation. It feels like these supports keep kind of rotating between bottom and mid quite a bit. I feel like SVG hasn't really had a home in a little bit now. He needs to be careful that he doesn't fall behind on, on experience and whatnot. Yep, he's only level 3, no points in uh, Tombstone, but it's alright for him. Oh. Mm -hmm. Alright, there's the arena. We'll toss right back on SVG Quinn, though. Cookie Hop coming forward from MSS, it's enough to save him. No, but they have the snowball. We'll go right back over here onto the creep wave, but not a whole lot here. They'll have another rotation coming out from MJZ. No, he's a purifying flames. Try to just heal back up again. A good spear knocking back SVG. Go get the purge off. Try to nuke him down just a little bit more. Do they have enough damage? It's not looking great right now, despite the fact they do have the tag team. Cookie Hop coming out again from MSS. Matthew is going to get taken down by Quinn. Another. He needed, spear he gets needed a millisecond. He needed a millisecond Ooh. to get that snowball off. Oh, they get You managed to get SVG, though. Good old Oracle with those purifying flames. Oracle actually feels pretty good to play versus Undying in these small skirmishes early on because you have just so much new damage. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Undying always likes to play with little HP, right? And then he decays you, soul rips and whatnot. Oracle doesn't care. He just nukes you from long range. I remember when Oracle first came out and they was, everyone was running it as a core mid. And it had, what was it, like 11 second basically like cooldown and you got invisibility with your ultimate? That was it stupid. Was, it, it was sick. I, I remember Oracle mid was one of my favorites too. Because you just had so, you had so much new, <laughs> I mean, you, you become useless. You're not really a mid laner. Eventually you become useless and everyone hates you. But for the first 15 minutes, you have a lot of fun. Have a smoke coming out here on the side of Quinn. See, they're hoping that they can get the jump on MNZ. Matthew, though, gonna break the smoke immediately. MSS, there's just so many heroes up here. Minos is not looking. He's gonna try to fight his way out, but he knows that he's dead here because the Oracle just cannot keep him alive for long enough. Nice fear, though, coming out from Leo Style. They'll be able to go collect over onto SVG. MJZ now forced to run away. Cookie Hop comes forward. They'll be able to find the Oracle, and they'll get the kill. Two for While one. this is all going down, you still have UR in the bottom lane just doing what he does best, hitting creeps. No, I was actually looking at bottom and thinking maybe one of them uh, goes top and helps. Yavar really doesn't have to do it. 
because he knows that they're already in an advantage, advantageous position. And because he isn't leaving, Venomancer can't leave as well. Because if Venom leaves, his tower is gone. TB will just solo it. So That's why they uh, remain down bottom. Well, 10 minute rooms are coming up. Should see a little bit of a skirmish for those. Matthew snapping one of those over on the side, though. MNZ, he's bursting down Quinny. He does have that rocket, but he's able to go dodge it. There's so much damage. In comes Matthew with the shards. They don't quite connect. And Quinn can turn this right around here on Minos. They don't have any way to save him. Although, no oh, at the last second, SVG comes in hot. Gets the kill. MSS going to join right back in again. Matthew struggling to run away, and they still just cannot seem to get the kill on Quinn. So they force everyone back. You are joining in here. It does have that uh, metamorphosis up and running. So I think we're going to see some pressure being placed. But it's just not done fighting just yet. Picky hop forward. Leo style takes the damage. We'll be able to go use a shield bash forward as Sacred has made his way over now, knowing that their tower is not in danger for a little bit because they've shoved yeah. the wave in so hard, and they took the bottom tier one. Yavar just goes away, continues farming with his meta, he doesn't have to fight anymore. I just want to say, that, obviously you know how good Queen is on Void Spirit, but he proves it game after game. That was some really nice min-maxing of his spells and HP and all of his resources to take down the Gyro, uh, bait out the arena and still live. Like even after the arena was popped, he didn't go back, he moved into them. He had an op he had an option to dissimulate out, but he went aggressively. Just he knows he can't die there. Quinn knows his hero very very well, that's for sure. Pressure on the mid tower though. We have Lelis joining in, of course, with the full four points of firestorm. He's able to easily spam out the waves, and uh, looks like Quinn has made his way up to the top lane here. Runs into Minos. Have to be careful. MJZ's here as well. So he's just going to try to go and purge off here. Remember, uh, during the draft, we were talking, well, uh, chat can't know. They were listening to the panel. But we were talking about if the meta is broken or not and all these heroes that are coming in and out of it. And I, this is something you don't see very often. You have Gyro versus uh, TB. This used to be one of the matchups. Let's say a year or two ago in the Gyro and TB meta, it was picked constantly. And now we see it again because all the other heroes that are good versus TB were banned out. Well, not all of them, but some of them, of them were countered by Underlord, right? So. They drafted a little bit into a corner because I know this is something Jenkins always says. Whenever he sees a Terror Blade or anything that has a lot of illusions, he's like, oh my god, just pick Zeus. It's that easy. Zeus would be so good here. But because they had already picked up the Mars, they needed to commit to that. Um, and they weren't able to go for that kind of mid-game presence with the heavy nukes. That's going to be able to deal with, uh, you know, the Terror Blade illusions. By the way, uh, did you notice the Terror Blade is going for the old green? Like he's, oh. he loves. I did not notice that. He loves that stuff. Yeah, he does have an Iron Talon, but it's kind of brown, so it still fits the team, I guess, somehow. Tranquil yeah, boots. He's going Very for the the tree, you know. Tranquil yeah, boots. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, huh. Is this, Tell uh, me, Lizard. Uh, Tell me you're here. Yeah, no, top it's just level analyzing on yeah. the uh, the tranquil poots on you are here. No, it's interesting. I am. I haven't seen it way too often. Um, I think it might have something to do with the Venomancer in the lane as well. This allows you to sustain yourself without buying way too much region. Later on, you can just replace them. So, I think because of that, he probably went for it. That's interesting, though, for sure. I very interested to hear what the uh, analysts will say about the Tranquil Boots. If they also think that it's the 200 IQ player, if they're just like, what is this nonsense? <laughs> Jump forward though, immediately over onto Matthew, will be able to hold him in place, and he stays alive a little bit longer, but does eventually go down to the Firestorm, and they drop that Tombstone right over here on the cusp too, so difficult for them to get over there without taking a lot of damage to take out the Tombstone. A few years back, maybe you would say that it's he tried to buy something else, and it was a mistake. He just asse mm. assembled the boots, right? Tranquil boots. But right. uh, I, there's what else can he go for with those items? I, I really think it's it's uh, on purpose that he's going for Tranquils here versus the Venom. Mm -hmm. He's got a missile coming in hot, but Quinn is here. Let's be careful that Matthew's not getting baited in. Does spot out Quinn over on the side. I'm trying to make some moves over on Dominos. 
danger. Mm. We have a vessel completed on Venomancer and almost an Agonims on uh, on Gyro. So those two yeah. items pretty much will allow them to fight and take some objectives. Step forward, coming out from Quinn, trying to drag back on Sacred. Does manage to connect, but we do have on the other side SVG, maybe just a little bit too far out of position here. So he is going to fall to Minos. And you'll see bounty runes get picked up for both teams now. Quinn's still hunting. He knows that Minos wants to be here. He's going to try to take some of these creeps. This is asserting dominance 101. He's just... He just took the creep that was on 5% HP away from Gyro and shoved him further into the into his own forest. I mean, I'd be afraid of Quinn too. <laughs> this kid's good. Yeah, it's a level 11 Void Spirit at this point. He can't really solo the Gyro, but he could bring him damn low. Pressure being placed here in the top lane. They don't have the greatest heroes for taking down buildings early other than really this Venomancer. And Sacred is trying to just kind of keep them off of this mid tower the best that he can. They already ended up losing that bottom because the Venomancer had to leave and they left Yuar down there. In fact, Yuar top of the net worth right now, 7.1k. But uh, I feel like they should probably respond to this, yeah? Mm, they probably got should. got the party too. Yeah. Or they can, they can choose to pressure mid tier one instead. We'll see what their options I Because they're not really going bottom. They are losing this tier 2 for sure at this point. So at least pressure the mid tier 1. I don't know what they're waiting for. I think a lot of these wards here. Sacred trying to push just a little bit harder than, than before, but... Right, the bottom is just melting. Mm. Are they going for the Roche? Okay, I'm, mm, I'm not sure about this. There's a DD on Gyro, so they can definitely take it. It's on 50% HP already. But they're giving a lot of map control away to clean secret. Oh. Okay, Gyro is going to be able to go grab up the Aegis of the Immortal. And I think they'll probably go for that mid push. They have to be careful though. Lelis on this Underlord is just so good at being able to shove these lanes right back out again. Both of these teams are like, look at these traps. They're so dirty when it comes to team fights. You have Underlord and Dying Snapfire on one side. On the other, you have Venomancer, you have Mars Arena. I would say Dire is a bit dirtier. You don't really want to fight into the Underlord and, and uh, the Undying. It's 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 sad. But then Venovores as well. It's gross. Yeah. Either way, it's gross. He has a mech completed on Venom. And from this point onwards, you will see him standing in front of towers and just massing, massing these wars and trying to push as much as possible because if they go on him he can live just long enough to pop that mech pop his ulti and perhaps something happens afterwards that's beneficial for his team you can see Lelis though also working on that pipe because he realizes that there's just so much magical damage that's going mm -hmm. to be affecting them in these team fights so just immediately dealing with each other yeah i don't know S sacred just, for me isn't offensive enough with with the way he's playing vano I like this a lot, and I know that th th he has a problem in Lelis. He's sitting here and defending the tower, but I had the feeling they could do a little bit more. Now it might be too late. No, they're try trying to put the pressure on the tier 2 and even out the map a little bit. And there's a Look, he's, he's trying to drop these little wards, trying to just hold off this creep wave, but it doesn't really matter here because you has got the meta up, there's no backdoor protection on tier 1s. So down it goes, although they do finally take the tier two top and they can, like you said, make that real casual play of moving over to the mid tower now. But I'm sure that Quincy is definitely realizes that this is going to be the next move that they want to do. Yeah, I'm not sure if Quincy can fight this because their meta is out. They did show it on that tier one. That's literally why Thunder Predator is coming. Clumsy neck is thrown out over onto Lala Spear coming out from Leo Style, but the Snapfire kisses, they do so much damage. They're gonna have to go use the Oracle Ultimate over here onto Leo Style. Snowball will buy a little bit more time for Matthew. It does look like he's gonna get left behind. They try to get the cookie hop, but they're not gonna be able to as they finally click him down with Yoar. And there's the Yule Scepter completed on Quinn. He does manage to go and he gets off that Venomant Ultimate. So it does a decent amount of damage. They didn't have the full pipe available just yet. Leo Style, though, following up with a beautiful arena, manages to go and hold three of them into place, but they're so tanky and they have. 
have all of these heals, Lizard. MNZ dragged back. Okay, we'll be able to take down SVG. Another net being thrown over onto MNZ. He's looking pretty healthy, though. Is he going to be able to fight Quinn? Looks like Quinn changing his mind a little bit. Lelis dropping the Pit of Malice, throwing out a little bit more of that Firestorm. But it hmm. seems like at this point they're going to back off. Who cares if you if they have Aegis when you have Lelis on Underlord and Snapfire on... on yeah, MSS on Snapfire. Like, it's... Like, I, I expected Quincy Crew to be a bit, little bit more defensive because they don't have the meta. But this combo deals so much damage. Like, if you get caught, it's, been dead? it's done. Yep. Oh man, that was a little... That was weird because he went in to go for the Yules, but MJZ hit him with the... Uh... Okay. The Q. Yeah, they find SVG over here too, and this is not looking super great for the Undying. Looks like he's not going to live up to his name as MNZ gets himself a double kill. Mm. And we're still just about at 20 minutes in, uh, like a 1k net worth difference between the two of them. Granted that uh, you are big boy here. Definitely has his Manta style, his Dragonlance, and of course the oh-so-fashionable Tranquil Boots that he's starting a new trend with. But uh, you also have MNZ here with that Ags, with the Maelstrom, and he still has Aegis too. It's fairly even, which is pretty crazy to think about. Yep. So far, both of these teams are um, utilizing their strengths really well. Every time Quincy Crew have their big ulties and meta, they use it to take an objective or take a good fight. And when they don't, it's when Thunder Predator strike. Um, they realize we still have the sages, we have to work with it. And they got Quinn, they got the Undying, but they they did hit the wall after taking that tier one uh, on the mid lane. They haven't really pressured any other objectives. They're just happy to farm. That's exactly what I mean. But over in the mid lane, Matthew, Etos is completed. He's not going to be able to roll away from this one. Not this time to be the Yule set up here over onto Sacred. Lots of these Mortimer Kisses will be able to take down the Venomancer. Mm. Aegis is, is running out very soon, too. So they need to be careful here. There, there you is. go. It's out. It's unfortunate for Thunder Predator because that's really how you want to be playing with Veno. You want to be up in their face, spamming Venom words, but uh, when your team isn't really around to follow up fast enough, your death is in vain. Uh, I, I don't think it was his mistake how he was positioning himself together with Matthew. I think the mm -hmm. team needed to be a little bit closer to follow up and uh, let him use his ulti, die, and afterwards they fight. Uh, that, that's usually how it should happen. Smoke play coming out from the side of Thunder Predator here. It's like they're hoping to catch any stragglers. There is a grandma in the woods, but I think they're after some bigger fish. Probably, most likely, they'd want to go after the Terror Blade. They do spot Lelis. It's pretty tanky. It's oh, going to be difficult to the snowball. Yeah, he's, he's thick with two Cs for sure. They'll get the shards off and the follow up Quinn jumping in. But MNC is also here and he's got plenty of damage with the call down too. Look at the killer onto Lelis. Leo style cleaning him up. A couple stacks of decay over here on the side from SVG. But they get this kill and they're not able to get an objective off of it, which not the most efficient Dota Lizard. Not not completely, but they are taking the triangle. They might ward it up right now. Uh, they're preventing Terrorblade from farming it. And they are True. moving closer to uh, Gyro BKB. He needs like right. what, 700 gold more, more or less. So. That's a big deal for them. What's Yavar doing? Almost Skadi. So he has enough gold to buy another ultimate orb. After that, what, 1200 gold away from, from full Skadi completed. He's hitting his timings really well on the Terrorblade too. I mean, they've been leaving him alone completely. So God, I hope he's hitting his timings <laughs> well. Well, he That's did. That's a huge problem. Hello? He, he, he was pressured quite a bit early on in the laning, at least, but it's a terrible well, idea. That's the least that. they could do is pressure him during the laning phase. But this is what I said, Lizard. You know, you laughed at me. You said they just forget about your war. They forget about a core. And yeah, that's what ends up happening is that you are just, you know, it, the positioning of Quincy is actually so good, too. And I mentioned this before um, mm -hmm. in some of the other matches, but the way they tend to stay around you are or you are manages to you know make sure that he farms so that if they do have a fight if that breaks out and they feel like it's advantageous he can immediately join in they can get these 
really just nice 5v5s, sometimes not even full 5v5s, sometimes they have the advantage because they don't realize that you are, is farming in the near vicinity. Mm. No, the overall, uh, exactly what you said, they managed to keep him locked in this triangle and the bottom lane, and he hasn't left it. He was never farming top lane. Because of that, he has so much farm. He's farming the Asians, which is the most effective way of farming for TB. And he's pushing out the bottom lane. And he's farming the jungle with his illusions. So, um, but it's all enabled by the way Quincy Crew plays. It's not that uh, Thunder Predator forgot about him. It's that they can't get to him. His team is always putting this barrier up. You have Lelis mid lane and everyone else playing around uh, the enemy shrine. So you can't go, you just can't approach the TB. That's true, that's a better way of putting it. Especially, I've mentioned, you know, if Quinn has a good lane, if Quinn gets a nice start, he's making space just constantly. And you've seen him be extremely active this game. He's 5-1-4. and four. Although they do go for the smoke play, they know that they're in the Roche pit. Can they get there fast enough, though, is the question. It's going to be difficult with all these wards being placed down, too, from the Venomancer. Looks like it's going to go down too fast, so they'll go, they'll throw in. Oh, look at those snapfire kisses. They do so much damage. Is he just tanking so much of this over here on the side, but it looks like we're going to survive a little bit longer. They'll go, they'll get that ultimate off from the Venomancer, managing to land it over onto UR. MNZ, they're getting dragged right back. That's the Aegis. It's down. Leo Style, he's got this arena, but look at the damage coming out of UR. It doesn't matter. Go, use the cheese MNZ force to go and TP out. They have to leave. They cannot stay here. <laughs> That's they even got the really... buyback over here from Matthew during all of that. He died to an illusion in the pit. He was he was trying to live somehow. He was face against the wall and terribly its illusion was destroying him. Uh yeah, you get Rosh, but at what cost? You lose age instantly. Maybe you get Quinn. That would be a really good they're able to get it, and it looks like they'll be able to do it. Well, of course, it's a little bit too chunky to get taken down that easily. So that was really nice. <laughs> um, Have a pause that... because Leo Style needs a disconnect. Thanks, Mr. Choco. Magic damage can be reduced by items that grant magical damage resistance. Now, th this get one is the most point. important one. Be careful not to make any more enemies than the five you're already facing. That's... <laughs> That's that's yeah. pretty much yeah. You, I, I meet a lot of players that have nine enemies at the. <laughs> can't reach my threads. <laughs> Pause, <No> please. <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. Oh man. But like you, you talked about Quinn and uh, how he can be very active early on, um, if he has a good laning stage or a good game, and. Situations such as this one, they happen because of that. Like, you're constantly hunting, you're co but that also means that you're constantly a little bit out of position. Right. And if they're together, you might die. It happened, I believe, two or three times, two two times this game. He was he was a bit too much out, and uh, they catch him. Looks like we do have a reconnection now from Leah Style, so. Hopefully we'll be able to start soon. Sometimes we have these little ping issues, unfortunately, especially when you're dealing with South American internet. And I'm not sure if Thunder Predator is playing at their team house or if they're playing from individual homes. I know Peru has gone on and off with like really extreme lockdown. Um, a couple of my family members actually are Peruvian and they were saying like they were getting sent these videos of like people who can't even walk their dogs outside. You're supposed to stand in the entryway and just hold onto their leash. And Damn, even that's... then they were getting yelled at. It was insane that's down bad. there. Yeah. And then it's funny Boston. because like this this guy's wife is like standing upstairs and she's like yelling at the police officers. She's like, oh, you know, why are you arresting him? I need to walk my dog. And they're like, you want to talk back? You can get arrested too. She's like, no, take him. <laughs> what are you that's... saying though? <laughs> that's crazy. No, in, in, in Bosnia, it's much more lenient. Uh, they really? just added this new rule in which you, you have to wear masks everywhere outside, but not unless you're... Uh, doing some sports activities. So if you're jogging, you don't. So people wear masks, don't wear masks. And the moment they see police, they start jogging. <laughs> it's very stupid. Oh, it's, it's bad it's because people are going to die because of that. But, you know. Yeah. It's just a circus. Yeah. Stay healthy, lizard. You, I've, I've seen your social media. You're smart. You wear masks when you're uh, out in public. Of course. Good on you, dude. Well, apparently the rest of uh, 
but that's also that's there also one of the there. things in Bosnia. You have to you have to put masks on social media. The moment I do the post, I take them off. You know. I'm shaking yeah. my head so hard right now. Mm. Don't die, lizard. Don't die. And protect other people too. It's not just about you. Of course. All right. MSS with, with his egg, yeah? Yeah, with his agonims here. Is he go who's he gonna be tossing in? Is gonna going to eat in Lelis, the big dump truck of a boy here, because he's basically unkillable with like the pipe, the atos, everything. He's chuck him. What do you do when you buy an underlord being thrown? Probably just a TB illusion, though, right? That's the safer play. Gobble up this TB illusion. Chunk it back yeah, at that's them. That's boring. That's true. That's I mean, true. although it is, we did watch as uh, one of the guys got killed by the illusions last time around the Roche pit. So I guess, I guess it's okay. But I would much rather see them uh, get a little bit more aggressive than that, personally. Once he gets, um, once he gets level twenty on undying, which is going to be somewhere in around forty-five minutes, you can take undying and toss him in, and then he dies with a tombstone, tombstone on death. <laughs> Next level. It's like a, it's like a techie suicide, except with zombies, basically. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the smoke is up. They're gonna try to make their way over into the castle on the side here. But looks like MNZ. No, they're smoked up too. So a little smoke on smoke action. Nobody's showing in lane, so they have to realize something's up. In fact, there's the ping. Both of these teams are hunting for position ones. You can see, by the way, they're going into the triangle. Just. Uh, hoping that the enemy team has smoked this four and that they're leaving the carry behind, but it's not happening. Everyone is mm -hmm. together. I really like to see this as well, both teams smoking, I think for the second or third time now at the same time, because it usually means that the game is very even as they're, both of these teams are reaching their power spikes, their items. At about the same time, mid lane, Lalis. Yeah, they're gonna try to go defend here. They have the Atos, but they'll immediately purge it off thanks to MJZ. Aether Remnant gets dropped, hoping to grab any stragglers. They've already made their way back on the side of Thunder Predator, so. They do force the TP, put a little bit of damage over here on this tier 2, but haven't managed to quite take it just yet. Yavar yeah, might be still in a really good position to fight. Matthew is going to scout him out, perhaps. <laughs> he needs help, though. One little Matthew against all of Kudzi. Yeah, they heat Lealis. <laughs> well, that's, Down that, goes Matthew. Does that hurt more when an Underlord with his fat ass drops on you? <laughs> it's like a cannonball being dropped yeah, on that, you, dude. That, that must hurt. That has to hurt. They take the tier 2 after the kill on Matthew, and they should pressure high ground, I believe. They they have the meta for, what, uh, only half of it is done. Daedal is completed on TB. This guy, he's big and scary. I don't know. I feel like they just all fall, like, to to Yawar when he's got this metamorphosis up. You got the blink dagger picked up on Leo style, but I don't think you want to go anywhere near these guys, right? Yep. No way. The Blink Dagger is there maybe to catch the TB because he doesn't have the BKB, remember. So you still can't kill him if you manage to control him. You have to ignore so much, though, in order to get to UR. Like, mm -hmm. they just don't have a lot of lockdown coming out here from the side of, of Thunder Predator. And that's a big problem. Plus, you've got Quinn, who's just constantly going to be dipping in and out. Looks like Leo Style is going to just go use the uh, arena, try to lock him down. I don't know if they have it, though. And Quinn, of it course, having nice that act after. It was cute, but they need also, more lockdown. It's so hard to hold down a voice spirit. Yeah, Oracle was fortune, using Fortune Sand on the gyro that was going towards Quinn, but uh, sadly it didn't connect on time. And I mean, sadly for uh, Thunder Predator, Quinn managed to get out. Um, for Thunder Predator right now, the name of the game is positioning in team fights and choosing uh, the ground where you fight. It needs to be somewhere on the high ground for Gyrocopter and where Venomancer sets up his wards already. It would be really good for them to fight that way. 
They've been running around so much, though. It feels like they haven't been able to set up really any of these Venom Wards, like, in a way yes. that's going to make it advantageous in the team fight. Do you They're agree with that, or do they... you think that he should be parked a little bit more? Yeah, it's hard to park yourself uh, on your side of the map. The way they're doing it right now is a bit oh. better. The style doesn't have the arena for another 10 seconds, though. Can they take down SVG? Yes, they'll be able to go burst him down. Matthew jumping in over at the back lines. Has his eyes over here onto Quinn, but the Ato's coming out. We'll hold Leo style into place. We'll go heal him up again. They bought back over on SVG. They do have this arena available if they want to try to go for it. Still this holding on to a lot of these ultimates, except for the call down, who's still down on for 29 seconds or so. That was so good, right? They're around the high ground to which they can retreat. And they're also on the enemy side of the map, which means that they can threaten an objective afterwards. So that's what I meant. They, they can't continuously smoke and stay in their own triangle. They need to make these moves. Still, though, I have a feeling MSS is just going to gobble that und undying up or underwater. <laughs> just yeet them back in again. Let's go. All right. Smoke up. And they're getting the wraparound play here. They know exactly where they are. Looks like Matthew's gonna be the first one to get jumped on with the silence and they'll go. They'll use the snapfire kisses, but it's a little bit early almost because Matthew's still alive and kicking. Leo's now trying to get in position here. He's got the blink, he goes forward. They oh. use the ultimate over on him. MNZ though, even with this BKB, he's still kind of struggling, but he's still alive. They're still doing a lot of damage and they were going in. They were gonna use that Underlord ultimate, but at the end they decide to stay and fight. Now the silence over here onto MNZ. He's trying to run away from Quinn. The Yeet coming out here with the Terror Blade. Down goes MNZ. And over on the back lines, MJZ, he can't even teleport out. They have a cookie with his name on it. So down he goes. Only one still alive after all is said and done is, of course, Leo style. There is no buyback over here on this gyrocopter. So they're going to be able to walk right down mid and take this tier two and probably put a little damage on the tier three as well. When when that Tusk gets caught the way he was caught, I think you just let him die. You let him die, you save your ulti, you maybe purge him so that he can snowball and blink afterwards. But you don't use Fortune's end for a Tusk. Um, sometimes no. you can, but in a situation such as that one, the moment you do that, Terrorblade knows that Jaru is free game. He can literally hunt, hunt him down, which is exactly what he did. He manned up next to Jairo and just right click him to death. And he couldn't do anything. Both of these teams weren't sure if they want to fight or not, because Underlord was TPing out with his ulti, with Dark Rift, and also Gyro was trying to TP while his BKB is out, uh, was on. Both of them cancelled it, and in the end, Quincy Crew, they definitely make, make, made it work a little bit better. I think, you know, they managed to take the bottom uh, tower and racks here. And they still left up this mid tier two. So, you know, they still have another point to be able to teleport to for a Thunder Predator. It definitely doesn't feel great, obviously, but. Like, at, at this point, this tier two is more about not. Uh, it's more about preventing Quincy Crew from taking two sides at the same time or all three sides, right? So that's why this tier two is very important. It, it, it's nice to have a teleport, but it doesn't really mean a lot. Yeah. Again, trying to look for silver linings in a potentially, you know, after a potentially disastrous fight, but... There's well, they might take Roche. Uh, yeah. They might take Roche. That could be good for them. No, no. Quinn's might... jumping forward. Gets the silence off on multiple targets here. There's going to be the BKB coming out now from Sacred. Quinn has his own BKB that he just picked up. And look at all this damage down it goes. It looks like they get the snatch of MNZ. He grabs up that Aegis. He's got his own BKB, but he's just trying to get away as Leo style ends up throwing up that arena, but he's just getting absolutely shredded. There's the Yules coming out. He tries to buy a little bit more time, but Lelis gets himself a double kill as they go and they buy back. MJZ on the back line gets taken down, oh. and they have creeps in their base now. GB flight? Ah, uh, never mind. Nah. He does wings, but he's not very good at flying, Lizard. Yeah. Well, MSS is trying to give him a little push out of uh, the nest, but it isn't really working every single time. <laughs> MNZ, he might just MNZ fall can't, here. He, he's, he's too slowed. There's too much damage. They buy back. 
It's coming right back up again with the Aegis, but they've already used most of their kit over here. SVG getting cookie hot forward. MNZ tries to get out. He cannot. Matthew's gonna get taken down. Looking like MJ's next to fall and they would have over to the house. We need another thing over here. Let's take down the courier. Everyone is dead on the side of Thunder Predator, and Quincy Crew remains again, showing why they're considered the kings of the Americas. Just a really solid performance from them in both of these games. I like the first game they had a little bit of a weirder draft. The second one, the draft was on point. And also this Underlord last pick for Lois was it was so good because it prevented Under Predator from maybe picking the heroes they wanted to pick. They end up with this gyro. Gyro is good, but he's not in his prime. It's not the gyro right. from a few years back when he actually outfarms everything with the nags or with a wisp by his side and then just takes over a game. A TB outfarms him and then just outscales him in team fights, does way more. Um I don't know, I think that Thunder Predator didn't utilize the Venomancer completely. He ended the game with 174. I think when you're playing this Veno, you need to play behind him constantly. You have Gyro Veno, you have so much damage early on, but they just. Sacred was left alone on an island in which he's pushing with those wards and then dying anytime Quincy Crew respond to him. Thing too, you have to keep in mind is that Sacred literally just got added to. Like, he's not even on the official roster. Um, you know, Frank ended up getting kicked, unfortunately, and now Sacred's learning to play with the rest of the team. But you know, these things happen. Um, don't forget, guys, though, that you can still vote for your Monster MVP at bts.gg/monstermvp. We saw some really awesome plays coming out here, so make sure you vote. But otherwise. That's going to be it for the series as it gets too old in favor of Quincy Crew, Kings of the Americas. Is somebody going to unseat these guys? We're going to go to a short break. And when we come back, we'll have our panel break it all down for you.